it live yet or no? Okay, yeah, I think it is. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? Uh, welcome back to Cryptid and Paranormal Kingdom with Tom and Carlito. Carlito and Tom. Uh, my, uh, my, 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 my partner, Tom, he's not here right now. Um, he's currently uh, doing his, his, his own show. And uh, we, we had an agreement, me and him, and uh, we're, we're kind of giving it some time to, uh, to, to, to see if his uh, show is going to establish pretty good, which I think it is because it's going pretty good. I've, I've seen his show already, and I wish him the best always. And, um, and I'm here tonight uh, by myself uh, on the show, and I have a special guest tonight, which is Marvin Allen, the one and only Marvin Allen. That uh, he's a very good friend of mine, and, and Tom, and in uh, and, 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 and a couple more people that we've been together for a very long time. Uh, and uh, he has his own show. It's uh, it's uh, what's the name of your show again, uh, Marvin? It's uh, it's called True Encounter. True Encounters uh, going yeah. on on YouTube, and you know we got we got two encounters with Marvin Allen and the Doug Pack. There you go. That, yeah, that's the name of the uh, Facebook group: uh, True Encounters and the Doug Pack with Marvin Allen. And I'm pretty sure most of you know this already, or most of you joined it already. And uh, yeah, so we're we're uh, I'm actually this is my first time coming back. Um, Many of you know, as most of you know, that uh, I had a, a death in the family. Uh, this was, uh, I'm going to say, maybe a month ago. Uh, my father passed away. And thank you, everybody. I'd like to uh, thank each and every one of you that, you know, wished me, you know, uh, good wishes and, 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 and condolences on my father's passing. But uh, he, he's, he's, he, I think he's in a better place now because... Um, he was 84 years old, so he was, you know, up there, <laughs> uh, and uh, and he died of a natural cause, uh, which was uh, 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 diabetes, and um, but he lived a good life to the very end. I know he was happy, and he lived a very good life. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm thankful for that that he uh, he lived for 84 years. That's that's quite a lot nowadays, considering you know all the things that are going on with the uh, pandemic and all that. And, uh, and yeah, so, so I'm, 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 I'm doing better now. Thank you. Everybody that was concerned and, um, Al, I'd like to thank Al. I'd like to thank Al Santariga. I'd like to, uh, thank Edward Nunez. I'd like to thank, uh, Bettina Moss. I'd like to thank, uh, David, uh, from Texas, I'd like to thank Tom Cardos. I'd like to thank uh, Noogie. And I might be missing a couple more people, and I'm so sorry. Uh, Richard Brown, I'd like to thank Richard Brown. I'd like to thank Chris Cyrus. Uh, that really, uh, they, they, they really uh, supported me on that, on my father's passing. Thank you guys all very much. I love you guys, each and every one of you. Uh, so, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, how I got to know Marvin. Actually, he is uh, the one that got me started in this cryptid world thing, and um, and I say that because uh, I first started listening to Vic like maybe six, seven years ago, and through Vic Cundiff show. That's how I heard uh, Marvin for the first time, and I'm like, "Wow, this guy's really, really, really good at uh, you know storytelling, right? Because he really, you know, he really puts his heart into it, like into every uh, into every encounter that he that he tells us or you know that he relates to us, because that's what it is. He gets the encounters from people, and they want him to tell it, and he tells it very well, and um, so." When I first saw Marvin on uh, on 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 Vic's show, or not saw but heard 
I like I was hooked. I was instantly hooked. I like, man, this guy's great. I love the way he tells his encounters and and uh and and and, and you know, he was he was a big success in 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 Vic's channel and you know, he had a many many views in Vic's channel because, you know, everybody loved the way he tells the the encounters and um and actually Vic really really likes him and, you know, he's appreciative of all the times that Marvin Marvin has been on the show. So, um, so yeah, that being said, uh, when I met Marvin, um, and then later on when I, you know, I heard a couple of, uh, encounters on, on Marvin, on, I'm sorry, not Marvin on Vic's show. And I kept seeing Marvin coming on. And then one day Vic said, well, you guys know, um, uh, Marvin has his own channel now. So, um, if you guys want to go check him out, you know, and he said is the name of his channel on YouTube. And I said, wow, let me go check this guy out. <clears throat> and, um, and that's when I started, you know, uh, listening to, uh, Marvin, he must've had like 300 members when I first got in there. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I remember <clears throat> I used to go in there and comment. Uh, on Marvin's uh, channel and say, hey, Marvin, I, and I really like the way you tell your stories. Man, I love your your uh, show, you know, and uh, and he'd be, and he would, you know, he would, he would, he would be thankful and he'd say, hey, thank you, man. I, you know, I don't know you too well, but thank you for your kind words and I hope you enjoy every, you know, all the content that I have and all the encounters. I said, yeah, man, I sure do. You know, this was all through through comments only. It wasn't even, I didn't even have com uh like contact, direct contact with Marvin. I didn't know his uh, phone number. I didn't know his uh, you, uh, uh, email or anything, right? So that's the only way we uh, commented. And then after a while, he saw that I commented so much, so he gave me his email, and I started, you know, uh, chatting through email with him. So, and, and that's how we started, you know, that's how we became friends. And then later on, when he uh, reached a thousand members in his YouTube channel, which uh, you know I proudly say that I helped him uh, reach a thousand uh, members in his YouTube channel because I was already in uh, cryptic groups and on Facebook. Uh, I can name a few: uh, Bigfoot believers. Uh, no, 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 no. Was it Bigfoot? No, was it? Is it was Dogman believers only, and dogman slash werewolf discussion those two groups and i remember i used to tell everybody hey guys uh have y'all heard of marvin y'all go check him out can y'all support him can y'all go and uh join his uh you know his channel and you know and everybody like oh yeah i've heard of that guy yeah he's real good he came out on vic's show quite a few times didn't he and i said yeah and they said okay yeah i'm gonna go check him out so you know they'd go check him out and uh and that's how you know uh Marvin you know he reached his first 1000 members <laughs> and um and after that you know he started doing lives and then uh I got joined his uh team on his live streams and and it was a wrap after that that's you know that's how we became really good friends this was like maybe well like a year ago Marvin maybe yeah, little, something like that. Yeah, we, um, we slowly but surely reaching yeah. out four thousand, four thousand mark. Right, 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 right. Yeah, now it. Yeah, you know now we're almost at four, four thousand now. Right. And I'm, right. Really, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really proud. Of not just me, but the team too. Right. Hey, wow, 4,000 already, Marvin? I, I haven't even looked at that, man. I thought you yeah, were like... It's going, it's going on. It's going on. It's going on 4,000, man. And the show is nothing without y'all. And I told everybody that all the time. It's not just my show. Right. You know, it's y'all show, too. Y'all voice count. Y'all voice matter. Right. You know, and... Like I said, I'm nothing without the members and subscribers because y'all make it happen too. And I love each and every one of y'all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin. We know that. And, you know, we, we, we support you as much as we can, brother. You know that. And uh, I used to support you on your channel. Well, I still do, actually. 
I, I still support you on your channel and, and, and your Facebook group as well. But what I meant was when we were part of your team and we were all in there and we didn't have anything else going on. Now I have my show going on. Now Tom has his show going on. And, um, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's good, man. You know, we, we've grown, we've grown and we started in your channel. You know what I mean? That's why I'm so happy to have you here tonight because, you know, we all started in your channel and now I'm thriving, I'm thriving in my channel. Tom is thriving in his channel and, you know, but we're all still, you know, uh, friends you know good friends at that absolutely yeah so i couldn't be any more happier man <laughs> and this all came from you marvin you know what i'm saying that's why i said that's why i like to give you props man because you know uh if it wasn't for you i wouldn't be here tom wouldn't be here uh Dude from Texas wouldn't be here. Maybe Noogie wouldn't be here. You know, a lot of us wouldn't be here, man. So that's why I like to give you props and, you know, and say thank you, Marvin, you know, that that we came from your show and now we got our own thing going, but we still support each other and, you know, we still love each other as good friends. That's, that's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely, that's man, absolutely. That's what it's all about, man. It's, yes. it's not, not to be, it's not to be big-headed, or see who can get the most members. No, no. Nah. It's not like that, but you got people that's like that. You got people that downgrade a person. You got people that really hate a person. And it, at the end of the day, it's sad, you know, because yeah. it wasn't like this before I came. Right. It wasn't like this before I came because I used to listen to it. And they didn't have this beef and stuff like it is now. Yeah, you know, you know what? You're right. You're right. It, it used to not be like that. This descriptive it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't it like wasn't that. Because I, it wasn't because I listened to it. Before right. I even got into this stuff, I was always curious about these creatures and about these uh, uh, um, um, so-called um, cryptids from somewhere else. It right. always was not like that because I listened to it. Yeah, you know, and I love I, I, I loved it, these subjects and topics, man, because I wanted to find out what this thing really is, what this thing consists of. Right, right, right. Because at the end of the day, we're all trying to find the truth, you know, which is, you know, um, these cryptids, right? We're trying to find the truth. We're trying to get the truth out there. You know what I mean? Everybody's trying to get the truth out there. I'm trying to get the truth out there. Tom's trying to get the truth out there with his new show. Uh, you know, you're trying to get the truth out there. You know, a lot of, a lot of these, uh, absolutely. absolutely. But yeah. how can you do that? How can you do that when you bashing one another? When you talking bad about one another? When you yeah. putting the next person down? When you calling yeah. this person a liar? A fraud and all this, and you don't know this person. Right. Technically, right. you don't know this person from 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 a um from a hole in the ground. Right. That's right. like trying to put a square in a hole. Right. You right. know it don't fit. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Uh, and it don't make no, at the end of the day, it don't make no sense, man. And it, it hurts me so bad to my heart, and I'm emotional when it comes to this subject and when it comes to this topic. When people say, Marvin, don't go after nobody when they do it to you, but it's just so hard not to, Carlito, because yeah, I'm, I know. Cut from, I'm cut from a total different cloth from the rest of these people. Right, right. Hey, and Marvin, let me- my cloth is that it don't leak. Marvin, Marvin, uh, let me, let me, let me interrupt you uh, for a second, man. Um, we had uh, David from Texas join us. We had uh, Lori Cardos join us. Hey, Lori. Hey, David. And uh, and Al's here, too. I just want to let you know who's all here, man, listening to us because, you know, we know they love us. If they're here, it's because they love us, right? So, uh, you know, you and me and, you know, and the whole cryptid family that we started. So, uh, hi, Diana Marie. She's also on there. Hey, big dog. What's up, man? He just He just joined. There's a lot of people here that that love us, uh, Marvin, and they're here to support us. And they're here to support us. Hopefully, hopefully they keep on joining, man, because like I said, you can ask me any questions. We're going to go deep in this topic. We're going to go deep into how I got into this. 
We're yeah. gonna go deep in um what what drives me what drives me to go uh, um um into these woods at night now to right. find out what can I see yes, any yes, evidence yes. Uh, uh anything on this creature. Yes, We're gonna exactly. find out what drives me to do these things that I do. Right, right. So and, it's and no questions that you it's no questions that you can ask tonight. Right. Exactly, Everything exactly. is open. Yes. It's yes, no yes. ball. Right. And that's what I was gonna tell the, 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 the listeners right now that you know, welcome everybody that you're here. And this is gonna be very interesting because this this is like the first time that we've had an interview with Marvin and we can ask him anything we want, anything at all, you know, uh, how he started, uh, you know, whatever, whatever y'all want to ask that y'all want to ask me, wondered. you can ask me. It's no boss. Right. That, it's no, we ain't nothing holding back. Right. Any right, questions right, right. you want to ask, you ask it. Right. Yeah. Any questions you want to ask, you ask it. Because from now on, all our lives is on location. All okay. our lives is going to be at the exact same spots where these creatures have been seen. Right, all right. Okay. okay. Mar Marvin, let me ask you, let me ask you this. Um, what, uh, what got you into wanting to, to, uh, to start doing your lives on location, out in the woods, out in the field. Can you tell us what got you into that? Like, what made you, you know, decide to do that or start that? Um, I, I, absolutely. Because I, I think a lot of people that, are wondering why, why you started doing that. So that's why I want to get down to why you started doing that. Okay, um, absolutely. Um, one day I was sitting in, so I decided to walk out and, and, and go on one of these locations where these people are creatures where these creatures have been spotted so i goes out i'm walking around now this is a location where i have found multiple multiple canine prints but mind you mind you i only <laughs> kept finding one okay i only okay. kept finding one you know i never find them in multiple tracks so i said you know what what about if I just come out and do mine live? Right. Which ain't nobody doing. Right. Which ain't nobody doing, you know? So you set the bar high mm -hmm. to make the next person go higher. Right, right, right. And, and you, you know, know what so I decided to do it that way. Um, I decided to do it that way, Carlito. Mm -hmm. the, what better way is to go out with the listeners and subscribers and take y'all right out in the field along with me. Right, right. To take right. y'all right out on location with me. Right. Okay. Where these right. sightings okay. have been seen, where people have came across this cryptic. Right, 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 right. Not right. just tracks, but we talking, we talking tree structures. We're talking about the bark ripped off of trees, 15, 16, 18 feet up in the air. It's impossible for something to reach that high from the ground. I know. Well, it's impossible, you know, Carlito. Well, remember what I was telling you that, uh, you know, how dogs have those haunches and they jump real far and real high? Well, uh, I think, you know, the reason, a big reason for that is because, you know, how the dogs have their, their haunches and they got their legs, you know, like this or whatever, and, and, and they can jump real high and real far also. I've seen, uh, like I was telling you the other day, I've seen, like, competitions, like dog competitions, where, yeah, they, yeah, I know all that. where they run real fast and they jump, like, into a pool, but they jump real, real far. Well, those haunches, they, 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 they help them, you know, like, long themselves really far or, or really high sometimes in some cases the dogs jump and they climb up a wall dude i mean i don't know if you ever seen that and that's that's crazy so now imagine a, a, a dog man with you know 10 times more more uh, muscle than a regular dog then yeah he's gonna jump 10 feet 12 feet high onto a roof like nothing or jump over a six foot fence like nothing you know what i'm saying so yeah. I mean, but now, I, now, that's that's what got me into that, Carlino. 
right. you know, to go out on location with my subscribers and with my members. It's no other way than to take y'all out in the field with me and give y'all a feel of what I'm seeing, what I'm doing, and what I'm trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. What better way is to take y'all, what better way than to take y'all out with me? Don't leave y'all in the blind. Don't leave y'all to where after I done filmed everything. Okay, now here's this, I'm gonna upload this. No, I'm gonna take you out and I'm gonna let you see everything that I see at that time and at that moment. Okay. You'll hey. be seeing the same thing that I see. And okay. that's basically what got me into doing this. Okay. We'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll talk about that here in just a few minutes because uh, I do want to ask you, you know, like where it all started and what all got you into this. But I got a real quick question since you're talking about the uh, on location uh, filming live on location that you're doing, which, you know, I like. Honestly, I do like that. Um, I got a question from Al. Al Santariga. He says, is your new location more squatchy or dogmanish? Um. If I had to say, because I have seen nothing really, but um, uh, multiple, you know, canine prints, I came across one, one print that I would say come from a squatch. And I take measuring tape out with me. And this was like 17, 18 feet, 18 inches, my bad, 18 inches. Now, looking at this print, it's like whatever this was, it stepped on a rock. It's like a flat surface rock, like a granite. Mm -hmm. It stepped on that. And it stepped just over some sand. But what 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 messed my head up the most, Carlito, what yeah. messed my head up the most about this step. Yeah. Is that you could see, actually see dermal ridges in it. Wow. You can actually see dermal ridges in it, just like what we got on the bottom of the feet. Mm -hmm. Dermal ridges, Carlito. Wow. You can actually see those. So you know. You know that this wasn't no bear. It wasn't no human. You know that for a fact. What right. other creature has dermal ridges that's close to a human? No. I you know? know? It has to and be some type of primate. When it, I mean, it, yeah, right. and when it's stepped, it's that you can partially see three toes on it. Right. Couldn't see the rest, but you could see three toes on it. And I was so mad, man, that I was so mad that you can't cast this stuff, yo. You'd oh. be so mad that you can't get just a, a mold of this. Well, and that's what hurt the most. Uh huh. But yeah, you tell Al that I think it's mostly Doug, man, if I was to have the answer. Now, remember, if you remember that first night that I went out on location, it's mm -hmm. pitch black dog. Right. And when I told everyone, did you hear that? Those two steps, boom, boom, and it stopped. Right. It stopped, Marlito. It didn't move again. I backs right. up out of there and I looks over there in that direction. That's when I see this light. I see this light on the right. Then I see it again on the left. Mm -hmm. And the last time I seen it, you know where I seen it at? Mm -hmm. It had to be 30 to 40 feet up in the tree. Just like that. Wow. Just like that. Now I goes over there the next day to look. And I took pictures of it. I'm gonna post it. Do you know I found the area? And I'm not talking about no small area. 
This was a big area of all the brush over there laid down flat. I mean flat. Like something bedded down over there. Okay. And I thought that that was, I'm like, wow. And the area was large. It wasn't small. It was hey, uh, large. Like something hey, uh, bedded down. Right. Hey, Marvin, uh, Alfred Santariga wants to know what color was the light that you saw? Okay. Now, the light that I seen, and, and, and this is the color that I seen, what I'm thinking it is. Maybe eyes was playing tricks on me, but it looked like, to me, like a white color. Wasn't yellow, wasn't orange, wasn't blue, but it looked at white to me. Okay. So I don't know what it could have been because it went from the right to the left to about 30 to 40 feet up in the tree. Okay, okay. And it's, it, it just, it fucked my head up. It blew my mind. Well, yeah, that, that's that's quite a ways, 30, 40 feet up in the tree. Yeah, uh, that's the last one. Now, that's not everything, though. That's not everything, though. Like right. I told them the other night. Now, if I go to my neighbor house, if I go out my door and to the left, it's two more neighbors, bam, then bam. The right. last neighbor got where you can go over in that part, go up and make a right, and it leads you deep up in the tree line. Deep up in there, back in there, and up this little ravine where I found these tracks that up there by these power lines. Okay. I have hey, uh, multiple tracks up by the power line. Okay. Hey, uh, Marvin, I have some follow-up questions from uh, Al. He says, how, big, how big was that light? Okay, I'm going to say in diameter, like we're talking round. Right. I'm talking about probably about and this is what I'm throwing out. I'm going to say do you know the size of a, um, like the balls they play, like a softball, those rolls, big, round, white ones? About like that, about like that, or a little bigger. Size of a softball. Yes. That's pretty big. Uh, that's pretty big, uh, Marvin. You hear that, Al? Size of a softball, man. That's that's this big, bro. But this see, big. I'm not saying that that was no type of cryptid or nothing because that light moved too fast. We talking about right, left, mm, three. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. Okay. Uh, I have another question from a uh, dude from Texas. He says, oh, Marvin, he says, Marvin, have you ever got the dread feeling yourself at all like the people have in some encounters? You know how they get that dread feeling when they they yeah. feel something, you know, like you around? feel doomed. Like you feel doomed and shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I get that feeling. And I never been scared of nothing. Mm -hmm. Basically, I don't, you know, I only fear law. But I was actually, actually scared. Right. I was actually scared, and I, I'm the type that I, I, I don't, I don't really fear nothing. But I was actually scared, Carlito. Right. Uh, I was actually scared. Let me let me ask you something, Marvin. Have you ever felt that 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 fear? You know, kind of like when you're when you're a kid, right? And you, you go to the to the beach or to the ocean, right? And you're sitting there having a jolly good time, you know, either by yourself, by your friends, or whatever. And all of a sudden, you get to like this like this dread feeling, like like a shark is gonna come and just bite you. And then you're like, oh shit, I better get out of the water. You know what I mean? Like, like you just get that feeling. You're like, I better get out of here. And you just, you know, you book it. You, you know, you take off to the shore. You know what I mean? I've had that happen to me many times. 
because when I when I lived in in California as a, as as a kid, and I used to go with my friends, you know, either uh, bodyboarding or surfing or whatever. Uh, I used to get that feeling, I, and I get the hell out of that damn water, man. When I got that feeling, you know, it's just I don't know. I, I guess you could say intuition. You could say you know uh, your 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 uh, sixth sense is telling you that you know that you you might be in danger. You know, and, and you yeah, primal fear. Paul Schaefer, there you go. Thank you, pa, uh, Paul. Uh, and, and you just, you know, you just want to get out of where you're at. And I, I'm pretty sure you felt that too in the woods. I'm pretty sure that's the same type of uh, fear that you felt in the woods when you go in there and you're like, oh, it's all good, it's all good. And then once you get so deep in there or whatever and you start getting this feeling, like like Paul said, primal fear, uh, you're like, you know what, let me get the hell out of here, man, because, you know, I ain't feeling this and I'm just – I'm just going to, you know, get out of Dodge, right? So I'm thinking right. that's what, that's what, you know, you felt also in, uh, in, 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 in the woods the other night, because you told me that you were, you were genuinely scared when you got in there and you're like, you know what? No, let me turn right back around and get the hell out of here. Hey, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I felt, I felt fear for the first time. Right. Right, exactly. Yeah, you were telling me that, man. I remember you telling me. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember you telling me, "Hey, Carlito, I felt fear, man. I, I felt. I felt. I actually felt fear." I was like, "Yeah, that shit happens when <laughs> when when you're too deep in there. You know what I mean? And you don't know what you're getting yourself into." And I was. I was in there. It wasn't out like I wasn't in there a little bit. I was in there. Right. I know. I know. You were in there for a while. So uh, uh, I have another uh, I have another question. Uh, this is coming from uh, Lori Cardo. She said, "Do you did you smell anything when you were in there? When uh, when you when you saw the light? When you were talking about the light that you saw the little light go, you know, up in the tree, 30, 40 foot in the tree, up in the tree? Uh, did you smell anything around you? You know how you get that smell when? Uh, no, only thing, only thing that I did, only thing that I did smell." It's like a, um, it's like a, I'm going to say like a, you know how you smell urine, but it's not really strong, strong, but it's like, you can smell it. You can smell it. Now, as far as like rotten uh, meat and all that, no, I didn't, I didn't smell that, but it's, I, I smelt urine, you know, but it wasn't a strong, potent urine smell. Right. Well, that could have been that could have been urine from any animal. It could have been a wolf. It could have been a bear. Yeah, it could have yeah, been yeah, yeah. Whatever. It could have been. But the thing is about it, though, this is mm -hmm. the thing, though, Carlito. Yeah. Where these animals walk and and walk and, and make tracks at. Uh huh. It's no other animal tracks over there. None, but these canines. None. And the guy told me, neighbors ran there, told me is that, and I asked them, because I'm the type that's going to open my mouth and ask a person a question, and I'm going to speak to them, because I'm trying to find out a few things before I go wandering up and in deep into these woods, and I'm by myself. Right. I'm going to ask them, have y'all seen any deer around here? No, we haven't seen deer for a while. Well, but, like I was saying, but like I was saying, though, Marvin, all the animals uh, have to, you know, uh, urinate, you know, uh, uh, raccoons. Uh, right. I, 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 trust me, raccoons. I know that. I mean, foxes. But it's no other prince out there, Carlito. These are the only prints that I have been seeing, which is right. weird. You would see some other kind of print from any kind of primate. Big or small. Right. The guy right. said he haven't been seeing no deer around there. He said at one time, every now and then, you would see a fox. Right. So it's like these creatures or these little animals, it's, they, it's like they up and left and like they disappeared. Because he don't see them anymore. And he said he used to always see them. They used to come in his backyard and lay down. Now, it's none of that. So what happened 
to these other animals? Why are they not around no more? Why they are why they are not walking around grazing no more? Well, where did they go? What happened? Right. Hey, uh, I got a I got a, a suggestion for you, man. Next time you see a print, try to make a, a cast out of it. And Tom Tom just said you can make a cast or a spackle to make a, a drywall spackle to make a print. So you can use drywall, you know, that mud or whatever, throw it yeah. in there and then let it dry and then you know pick it out. You can do that. Okay, and I will, I will, I will do that because I want to do one of these canines. Yeah, it's 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 called it's called it's called joint compound, and it it's already mixed. It's like this doughy thing, and you put that in there and fill it up and let it dry, you know, and then just pick it right back out, and you'll have your print, you know. And then another question Tom had was, um, do you go armed when you go in the woods? Because I know I would. Do I what? I know I would. Do I what? Do you go armed? Now I have took the I have took the SK in there with me. I have took the XK in there with me, and sometimes I just take the nine. Because my oh. son got a nine millimeter, so I either take that or I take the SK. I so, was gonna take the, I was gonna take the Draco, you know, the little small AK forty seven. Okay, but I thought you, know, you but then I, then another I, thing, I, another I, thing, I try not to go armed. Why not? I try not to because I don't want to go in there and they thinking that 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 I'm trying to attack or bring them harm or shoot them. Which I know Bri is dumb on my end, but that's me. That's what I do. It is, you know why? I'm going to tell you why it is it is it is dumb on your end because uh you it's not it's not just uh Dogman or Bigfoot out there. There's wolves out there. There's panthers that have been spotted out there. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, sorry for my language, but I'm gonna go fucking armed if I go in the damn woods. Because if a panther comes out and just fucking stares at me like he wants to pounce on me, you best believe I'm gonna shoot that motherfucker right between the eyes. You know, and, or if it's a oh, wolf, yeah. or something and, and that you can't fight wrong. off. And don't that's just regular wrong. animals. Don't get me wrong. I understand. That, but that's just me, though. I mean, everybody don't get me wrong. I understand, and that's something that I would do, and that's something that I would consider. So, don't think that I don't. I wouldn't go in there arm or nothing like that, because I will go in there with that motherfucking semi-automatic. I don't have no problem. You know what, what I mean? But do? I don't want to go in there. I don't want to go in there and shoot at this creature, and then no, 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 no. I'm not all saying hell, all hell break loose. Right, all hell right. break loose, Carlito. Just hear me out. All right, hell right. break loose, and they coming from multiple. They coming from multiple ends. That's what would really scare me and fuck me up. You know what I mean? Because if they attack from multiple ends, I'm I'm, I'm shit out of luck. Right. I have let, no win. Let, let, I let, have let, no let, win. Let, I have no win, Carlito. Right. Look, 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 let, let me explain. Let me explain something. Let me explain. Let me explain something to you, Marvin. I'd rather have a gun that I know that's not gonna kill a dog man. But you know what? I'd rather shoot myself before a fucking dog man tears me apart and oh, eats no, me alive. I, I, I'll tell you I that. that. I can't do that. I'm not I can. Kill I can. I'm not gonna. You know, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna take my own life. You know what I mean? I'll I'm shoot him. I'll shoot him a couple of times. But if if I can't take him down, and I see that I he's coming, he's coming to get me. Shit, I'll, I'll shoot myself. I don't give a damn. I mean, <laughs> but that's just me. <laughs> Sorry, guys. To each his own, though. But I, I can't. Right, right. Well, everybody thinks differently. But uh, let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something that Paul Schaefer said. He said, "Never go on out unarmed. Dog man can tell your intent with or without a gun on you. I believe so. I, I, I believe that is true. So even if you're armed or not armed." He's yes. going to know Answer what you're going to do. Answer this, though. Okay. Answer this. And a lot of people have said this. A lot of people have said this, that they know your intent. Okay. Right. I believe by, they do. We going back on that, or we going by third. You know what I'm saying? What is we going by on that? That's what I want to know. What are well, we going by on that when they know your intent? 
Because they can smell you just like any dog. They can smell you. They know. Look, I'm going to tell you something. I'm really good with, with dogs. They smell me. How can you smell tell if you good or not? They can. That's the questions they, that I go out there. That's the questions that I ask because I want to know look, how, they just can can. how can something know that you good or bad by your smell? But because they can. You. Tell, me, tell me how you came up with this. I don't know. Explain but I just to know me they how did you come up with this story? They can because dogs can, dogs can how smell people. And they know if they're good or bad. I mean, I'm not a scientist to explain everything, like, down to the T, but... How do we know that our smell can tell if we get a bad? I'm just saying, I know they know. I know. Because there's so many people that saying it. How do we know, though? How did they come up, whoever said this, how did they come up with that theory that they can tell if our smell is good or bad? That's all I want to know. Break it down to me and Look, tell me your third on how did you come up with this and we can bounce from there. Okay. Look, I've proven, proven it. I've proven it myself. I've proven it myself with dogs, okay? Just regular dogs. That when they when they they like they're like I, they're like, watch out because my dog bites or whatever. And I get close to him and he doesn't bite. And they're like, what the hell? Normally he barks and bites people and shit. I'm like, well, you know, I'm good with dogs. I mean, I don't know what it is, but, you know, dogs like me. And then I've seen it where there's other people that come by and they like, you know, they get real like aggressive against them. Out of no reason, that person is not even teasing the dog or uh, swinging a stick at it or nothing. And the dog just knows that, you know, he don't like that person. That I, I, I'm guessing vibes, vibrations. I'm, I'm guessing uh, frequency. Remember when we talked about frequency on uh, on our previous show with uh, Richard Brown? I think that frequencies do show, and, and the people's frequency, you know, they can pick it up. Dogs can pick it up. That's what I think. Now, I, like right. I said, I'm not a scientist, so I can't break it down to the T, but right. that's, that's my saying. take on that. I mean, I'm not saying that, though. All I'm saying is for the people that say that they can go by your smell, I'm just saying, can you break it down to me, whoever, can they break it down to me on how they know that a smell can tell if you good or bad? That's all I'm saying. Well, I don't know. I'm I'm not a scientist. I can't. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all yeah. I'm saying. That's all yeah, I'm I know. Saying. I know. I know. I know. Uh, well, um, Paul Schaefer said it's energy, and I, I agree. It's you know, it could be the energy of the person too, and uh, so so you know. And, and Tom said Richard explained it uh, very clearly on on our show, which is true. You know, they they pick up on the on, on the frequency and the energy, like Paul said. So I, I I'm going with that, man. I, like I said, I'm not a scientist or anything yeah, like that. I'm not but, saying that either. But a lot of times, man, when somebody tells us something, when a lot of people, when somebody tell us something, man, we gotta still do homework and research, and we right. need to ask that person is, how did you come up with? They can tell if I smell good or bad. Tell me. Break down your um break down your theory onto how you came up with this. That's all I'm asking. Okay, how about this, Marvin? We're we're gonna we're gonna research on that, me and you, and we're gonna have a private one on one on that. How about that, brother? That's cool. That's cool. All right, all right, all right. that's it, man. That, that, what else? That, Any more man. questions? That's a challenge. Challenge, challenge. Of challenge of questions. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah, yeah. I got another question. Hold on just a second. Uh it was from David uh from Texas. He said, What does Marvin think these creatures are in his opinion after all he's heard for so long? Thank you, David. Thank you, David. What do I think they is? Yeah, what do you think these you know what? And I told are? them, I told them, and when, when I was on Venomous Springs, I told them, actually, I said, you know what? And it's coming from me. I said, I don't know what they really are. Mm -hmm. Because I don't. I don't know what they are. Just okay. because they look like a, a, a dog with human traits. Okay, still that, don't that, put me in. The, still don't put me in the field and say that is. This is what it is, because okay, I don't. 
that that's fair that's fair you don't and that, exactly that that's a good answer i mean you you could just leave it at that but they're wanting to know what you think they could be like what do you think they could be oh okay you know? now okay now when you want to go on that 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 subject or that part uh -huh. of, of a theory um they could be a few things you know i i mean to, for, for me and it's just just for me it could be some type of undiscovered cryptid. Right. You know, it could be some type of unknown cryptid, not right. known right. to science. Yes. Will science ever recognize this? No, they won't. Okay, so you think they're flesh and blood, living, breathing creatures that uh, they haven't been discovered yet? Is that what you're saying? I, I really do because they eat, they shit, they sleep, they fornicate, they bleed. Okay. Let me ask you this real quick. Have you ever, or anybody in the chat, all you guys listening and watching, has anybody ever ran into uh, 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 either a Bigfoot or a Dogman uh, manure, which is, you know, a piece of poop, basically? Have you ever run into anything like that, Marvin? As far as the um, feces, uh, yeah. no, because I don't know what Doug Man feces look like. Now, as far as Bigfoot, human-like, just much long, larger, and a lot of it. Okay, yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. Have you ever ran into anything like that, personally? No, uh, from, from, from me being out, uh, no. Uh -huh. No, okay. No, okay. I have, right. but I, I do keep my eye out on such uh, 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 such uh, stuff to find and and knowing that it's a whole pile of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know it's not coming from an ordinary animal. Okay. Yeah. Right. Because of the size of it, it looks like it looks like, like it would be human, but Absolutely. way bigger. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, obviously. Uh, let me uh, ask you another question. Diana Marie wants to know, Marvin, do you believe they push out big guys, an example, Bigfoot, and should you go armed? No, and you should go armed no matter what for your own safety. Just saying this for your safety. Right, and you know what? She absolutely right. Thank you, Diane. I should, I should go armed. You know, I should go armed, and that's, and that's, and that's no mistake. But man, man, don't get me wrong, though. Like I told you, I have been out there armed. Um, you know, with the SK most of the time, or I would take the nine out. Now, sometimes when I go out, I don't want to go armed um, because I told you the situation. I don't want them to think that I'm in there. To, to slaughter them or to try to gun them down because I do believe they know what a firearm is. I do believe that they know that this weapon or thing hurts and could cause harm. I do believe that. Okay, let me ask you this. Do you think every single dog man out there in in the encounters that's been all over Vic, everybody else's right. channels, do you think every single dog man knows what a gun is if it sees it? Answer me that. You know what? And this is coming from me and me only. Mm -hmm. My answer for that would has to be, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Fair enough. I, I, I actually don't know. You know. I actually don't know. I can't say. Okay. But I do believe that when they see something that they haven't seen before, mm -hmm. and they know it's it's not something that they used to seeing, I do believe that. Like that, that's just like let me put this in there, Carlito. Okay. That's just like if you've been in these woods for eons, for so long. They've been around here for so long, and. They walk this path every day, and all of a sudden, they see a camera 10 feet up in a tree, and they see it. They know that something is out of place. 
Mm -hmm. They know that this wasn't there <laughs> a day before. They know it's something that they not used to seeing. So they gonna avoid walking that route because they know it's not it's not normal to them. They know it shouldn't be there. They know it shouldn't be there, Carlito. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's common sense that uh, the woods are or are, are for. Uh, 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 feral dogs or, or, or wild animals, which, you know, coyotes is a wild animal. It's a feral dog, but, you know, well, from right. the family. And uh, there's even been reports about dogs uh, going feral and mating with coyotes. And that's what they call, um, I don't know, uh, Paul, Tom, help me out with this. What do they call a koi dog? Koi dog. That's what they call them. It's a it's a regular house dog with the with the wild coyote from the woods. They mate, and the coyote is a bigger size than the regular coyote because of the mix or whatever. And the koi dog is 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 way bigger than the regular uh, coyote. So they sometimes yeah. they 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 mistake a koi dog with the wolf, but it's not a wolf. It's a, it's a koi dog. It's a mix yeah. between a regular dog and a coyote. So was, you know. I was asked this, Carlito. Do I think okay. that they make? Do I think that they make outside of their own? Truthfully, I don't think so. Will they? Could they could, could be? They could could they be. Could. But they, they, I they, just think I just think that it would come out as a bigger hybrid. I don't think it's gonna come out with arms and hands. I don't think that. I just think it's gonna come out bigger. Right. Now I think if a dog man mate with a dog woman, then yeah, it's gonna come out a dog baby. Hey, wait, 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 wait. What, what did you just say? You said a big foot and a and a, and a dog baby? No, I said um, I said a dog. I, I said dog man. And a dog woman, I said, of course, I think it's gonna come out to be a dog baby. Well, yeah. I mean, with hands and arms. Right, right. That's okay, now let, 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 let me ask you this. Let me ask you this and tell me truthfully what you think about this. Do you think since Dogman and Bigfoot, they're always fighting, uh, you know, territories and always, you know, around each other. Sometimes they respect their territory. Sometimes they don't. You know, sometimes I've heard that Dogman run Bigfoot's out, big, big feet out or whatever. But do you think, ask me this, do you think there has ever been a cross between a Dogman and a Bigfoot? And if so, what do you think would come out? Oh man, you know what? It I think it depends. On, I, I I think it depends on the size of both of them. You know, I just think it's a it'll be on the um the size of both of them because Doug man got weapons. They got teeth and claws. Bigfoot got strength. They got these brute arms, big hands, and it's like they can grab you by something and just rip it straight off. Right. Right. So that's what I think. It, it goes on size. I think it got something to do with the size. Okay. Okay. Let me let me ask you a question because there's a couple of questions. And since I'm by myself tonight, then, you know, I got to be looking at the chat too. And, and, okay, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. For questions. Uh, David from Texas says, is it possible uh, there's a Sasquatch and Dogman hybrid? Then this is what I came up with. And maybe I'm wrong. Uh -huh. And I'll admit if I'm wrong, but this is just a theory that I came up with. I came up with a theory of this. Now, you got this cryptid out here that's called the Gugwe. Yeah. And I was thinking that, and I asked B this. I said, do you think that, and this was a long time ago. This was last you're year right, sometime right. I asked her this when she was on the show. Yeah. And I asked her this. I said, do you think that 
a Bigfoot and a Doug man can make and create this Gugwe type creature. Right, right. Because a Gugwe is basically a short Bigfoot, it's but both. very, it's very, uh, very, uh, what, how do you say, aggressive, dude. Right. It's kind of like the, it's kind of right. like the Chihuahua it's, of the Bigfoot. It's, <laughs> right. It's mixed. It's mixed with both, though. Yeah. So why can't it be that they mating together and creating a Gugwe? We don't know that. Don't nobody out there in the cryptid realm know if these two mating and creating gugweeds. Right, right. Don't nobody know this, Carlito, so don't say it's not possible because you don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, right we can, we can, yeah, you're right, you're right. I mean, we could just, you know, you know, speculate that these things happen and that a gugweed might be a dog man and a uh, Bigfoot hybrid, you know. I, but, you know, and I asked that question, I said, being that it's so it could aggressive. Be true. I said it could be true. Yeah, could be. It could create that gut week. You know? Yep. That's what David was saying. And he's you know, he said that he's heard that too, you know, about gugwees. Or he thought about that too. Any other question? Face eaters. Yeah. Uh let me let me see. Hold on. Let, let me see. But I think I might have uh skipped. <laughs> one or two questions, man, because we we went on me and you for a while. Tom, Tom had one. Uh, hold on, one second. Hold on, uh, what what was it? Oh yeah, what is your? I remembered. I, I don't even have to look for it no more. What is your? Tom wants to know what is your um, opinion or belief on the Gable film. That's an awesome question, man. The Gable film. Yeah. I do. I do think that the um the Gable film was real. I do think that they got to these people, mm -hmm. um, and 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 made them made them change their um their story about what they really saw and what really happened in those woods of Michigan. Mm -hmm. I do that. That was a real creature on tape because you can see the dog legs actually in back bet right you can actually I do see it. I, I, I believe all, it i believe four, it's legit all four mm -hmm. limbs left the ground at, at one the same time, time. yeah now, you show me time. a human that could do that yeah no you they show can't. me a human that could do that and that they, that creature was bulky it yeah. was wide yeah. right right yeah that's and what that me really was skinny right yeah that's what me and tom were saying uh maybe one or two uh lives back that uh you know i can't remember who the guest was but we both said yeah there's no way a human can get both front you know uh limbs and the back limbs up in the air at the same time and jump like a you know jump jump like a greyhound basically nobody yeah, it, uh, no, it's, it's there's no, there's no human that can do that on all fours it's no exactly. way Carl, a human exactly. is not going to do that. Right. It's not going to do that. And I believe that they got to them people because even, even um, what's the lady name that used to do that up in um, Michigan? I don't know. Um, I've seen, I've seen video. I'm trying to think of her name. I, does lady, anybody... You know, does anybody in the chat know the name of the lady Marvin is talking about that you know walks on all fours? Like no, the, the lady that used to um that used to investigate a lot of those sightings in Michigan. Oh, um, I don't know. I, I... Anybody in the chat know her name that y'all could tell him and he could tell me, please? Okay, Linda Goffrey? Is it Linda Goffrey? That's her name. They okay, made Tom. her change. They made yeah. her change her story, and she said that it was a hoax. Oh, okay. Yeah, they made her change her story. Right. Well, as as far as the the Gable film, um, I'm with you. I, I believe it's 100 percent legit. The first one, and the second one, I believe they they made him say that it was him, and you know maybe paid him and some money or whatever, shoot. whatever. Yeah. And belly yeah. Shoot. yeah. Yeah, so that's that's even though let me tell you something, Marvin. I have seen videos 
on the internet. I don't know where. I can't remember. But maybe YouTube, maybe, I don't know, Reddit. I don't know. But I remember seeing there was two women. It was, it was like they were like sisters or, or, or mother and daughter. I don't know. But they were they would uh, walk and even like sprint on all fours, bro. I seen them like sprinting like a dog. But, you know, they, they'd be doing this like, you know, with the legs and the hands. And they would even like jump over, you know, uh, picnic tables and, you know, chairs and stuff like that. On all fours the whole time. I mean, I was like, "Wow, that's crazy how they can do that." But, uh, but, but like, but they would just, you know, just they would just kind of like jog. You know what I mean? They, in no way, in no way, did I ever see them running. You know what I mean? Especially picking you're not, up all, you're not all four legs at the same it. time. Yeah. You're not gonna see a human doing no. it that way. You're not. Yeah, no, nah, you ain't, you're not gonna see that. Just like Tom said, you're not gonna see any human do uh, on all fours lift all four legs at the same time. There's no, no way. It's impossible. Right. It's impossible. Any other questions, buddy? Uh, let me see. Uh, I haven't seen any. Tom was saying that uh, the lady in South Africa is the one that walks like that, by the way, Marvin. Um, let me see. Let me see. No, I don't see any questions uh, lately since the last one I asked. That was Tom about the Gable film. Um, you guys got any more questions, guys? I mean, we can go on and on, me and me and Marvin. That's not a problem. But if you guys yeah, have any I questions, just wanna, um, I just want to. I just want to get down to the question. Um, mm -hmm. I want people to just listen, like they listen to any other podcast or group out there. You know, right. I want them to give this channel a chance to build itself. The to, um, to let them know that they're gonna bring them. The the, the 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 truth it's not gonna be nothing made up no fiction or nothing like that you know okay. what i mean give the channel a chance listen to it and, and see what kind of information that you can gain from it don't okay. think because you listen to another podcast that that podcast giving you all the truth in the world right 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 yeah you gotta give take another a podcast a chance Right, right. I, I believe you got to take a little bit from everybody, you know, yeah, you got and, to. And, and not try to, you know, not try to shut somebody down because uh, you think little, that it's hey, not real. A little, bit, or, here, little yeah. bit here, a little bit here, a little bit there. Yeah. Hey, Marvin. Okay, so I want to tell you before we get any more questions, I want you yeah. to tell us. I want you to tell us, bro, how you started. I know you had your your encounter because I heard it on Vic Show when you were. Uh, your sister was driving. You didn't want to scare her when you saw the dog man running from the hills towards the car where you were driving. I know that. But um, how did you actually start? Like, did you start before that, before you saw the, the dog man running in the hills when no, your sister no, was driving? No, no, no. Now, now, when I say my dog man encounter, it was in the field. It was right, in, in the, the field. field. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, When I seen it, it was just, you know, just sitting there. Okay. Sitting okay. back on his hocks. Right. Because I'm right. thinking that it's a tree at first because it's so wide and it's so black. And I was like, that's not a tree. Trees ain't mm -hmm. black mm -hmm. like that. And this was black as night. But right after that, it's what got me into this. Now, I wrote several different um. Um, Doug man, you know, Doug man, um, platforms, none mm. got back at me yet. So Jeff Nadolny responded to get my encounter. And that's when I told you at the time I gave him multiple, multiple encounters. Mm -hmm. On his show. Right. So I anything that came out, anything came out, anything came out the Carolinas on this show came okay. from me. But let me let me let me rephrase that question. How did you start with cryptids in the very beginning? Like, how did you start your interest in them? I mean, was it before your sighting, or was it after, or or when you were a okay, kid? Okay, I mean, okay, I, okay, I got you. It, okay, yeah. it was like this. I always was interested in these things. You know, I done seen. Uh, uh, ghost spirits, everything coming up, you know, angels. So a lot of stuff I never talked about. So okay. I was always interested in this stuff, especially okay. Bigfoot. 
even back in the seventies, you know, I like to look, I used to look at Bigfoot and Wild Boy. Mm. This show used to come on. I was fascinated by it. We had a sighting of a Bigfoot in, in the city. When I say in the city, in the city, where houses is connected to each other, walking mm. down a main street, 12 feet tall, and this thing had to be wide. It had to be wide as a refrigerator in some. You're talking about four and a half to five feet wide. The one you saw? The one that was walking down the street. Oh. In a residential neighborhood. Is this the one Jody Cook mentioned uh, not too long ago? No, this was in Baltimore in the city. Oh, Baltimore. Walking down the street, Carlito. Oh, shit. And the odor that came from this thing was just unbearable. Mm hmm. Dugs would not even track it. It made its way down the street, which leads into a dead end. Now, mind you, it's an army base up here. But this thing knew where it was going at because it was trying to make it to the tracks. Okay, hold on. Let me stop you right there because you're kind of jumping uh, on the question that I was asking you when you started. You see, what? I started right after my sighting. Okay. That's when I really got into it. That's when okay. I started really researching on what this thing was and stuff like that or what it could be. That's okay. what really got me into this. So okay, so you didn't know nothing about big well Bigfoot maybe, but you didn't know nothing about Dogman until you saw it like your sighting. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, because I didn't even know that. You know, I, I mean, I just I, I didn't know what no Dogman was. A lot, like a lot of mixed information about you, but I, I didn't, didn't know, know what it, I didn't know what a Dogman was. Okay. Okay. So after you yeah. saw the, after you had your sighting, that's when you uh, that's when but, you started researching okay. what a dog right. man was. But, but mind you, mind you, though, um, let me take you back and rewind. Okay, because when I was about Marvin, Marvin, when I was about twelve, when I was about twelve, my mother okay. told us about these large black dogs that she used to see when she was a little girl that used to follow her from home and then stand up on their hind legs. Okay. And she said they did this every day. Uh-huh. Every day, like they escorted her home or made sure that she got home safe. Okay. So my mother did tell us about them, but okay. still though, we never still didn't know what they was. Okay. She so just called me... them. She said that they was large black doves. Okay. So let me run this down real quick. You had your sighting, then you started researching, then you started getting into the dog man and, and all the encounters. Then you started uh actually trying to get into the storytelling with uh with Jeff Nadoni, right? Right. And then that's when it went kind of south because he took some stories from you and yeah, without but, telling you and he started doing his own thing. Right. When, when he was right. supposed to when he was supposed to start together with you, right? And then and then that's to help, all. To help build my channel when I started it. But right. Right. It was never ne ne neither here or there because it never happened. And I talked to him after that, you know, squashed it, whatever. But another thing is, though, what really made me else get into it is because my sister, my niece had this guy working on, was working on our house. And okay. I was down there writing stuff, and he asked me what was I doing. I said, man, it's, it's crazy. You wouldn't believe it anyway. And he said, try me. And I told him about my encounter. And he said, um, do you got any time? I said, yeah, why? He said, I'm going to tell you about something that I saw 
years ago in the woods of North Carolina. And he told me about his sighting. Okay. And then he said, I know people that have came in contact with this creature or similar to it. And okay. he, he, he put the ball rolling. He put me in contact with a lot of people. Okay. Hey, Marvin, Marvin, um, thank you. Thank you for letting us know. And, and you know, where we, we, we're all this started and, you know, how you, how you got everything going. But um, we, we've been on for like an hour, maybe a little bit over an hour, and it's kind of late. There's a lot of people watching, and uh, I don't want to have them stay up so late because they – they have been asking me for you to tell an encounter, man. You know, that's what you're good at, bro. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're... I, I am. I, I am. I didn't have none. I didn't really. I didn't even have none ready. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to think of one that I can. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just, trying to you know, think of one that I can, you know, that I can tell. Okay. Real yeah. quick. And, um, but, um, that's yeah, cool. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't expect this tonight. I didn't expect the, um, the um yeah. the tele encounter, which I don't really mind because that's well, something that's right. something that I love to that's something that I love to do. Right, right. You know well, what I'm saying? I, that's I, I that's wasn't, something I love to do. Yeah, I you wasn't know? planning I wasn't planning on an encounter either, but Tom was asking me and uh dude from Texas was asking me. So I was like, okay, yeah, I got y'all, man. I'll I'll get him to to uh to to tell an encounter. Thomas uh said Ty J. <laughs> Uh, they know already. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, hey, yeah, I gotta get back. I gotta get back on her anyway and finish yeah. telling her hey, um, what you call anyway. But that's gonna hey, be her, um, her. That's gonna be, huh? They're 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 putting up ones for a story, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I probably I would believe that. You know what I'm saying? I can believe that, but I'm trying to think of um, trying to think of one that I can um, that I can um, I can go into and um. And 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 Intel. Um, I do got um. Hey, uh, I do Marvin, got one that was in. Huh? Mar Marvin Marvin is requesting. I'm sorry, Marvin. Thomas is requesting a Ty J story. He said, "Tell a Ty J story, Marv." <laughs> yeah, but um, I usually tell hers on YouTube. Right. Because right, I broke right. them down. I broke them down in the series, Tom. So I wanted right. to tell them. I really wanted to tell them on on YouTube. Hey, uh, say say hi to Lee. Lee's on here too. Hey He's Lee, watching. hey my buddy, hey my friend. Hey Lee, give me a call on Messenger after we leave off of here, please. <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, I'm a th I'm trying to think of one that I can tell real quick. Okay. Um, you know, to get them something to, um something to, um listen to um. Okay, I'm a, um I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna do this one because I do have one. Okay. For my eyewitness who was um. Who was driving? Okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and tour it. As y'all all, all right. know, anonymity means a lot to me, and I take that by take that to heart more than all anything. Right. So if a person asks me not to do this, not to say this, then by all means, I'm if I give them my word. At the end of the day, that's all I got. My word is my bond, and I break them for no one. Right. I break them for no one. So, without further ado. Offer, Let's jump your dude from right <laughs> into this encounter. All right, cool. All right, y'all. This is this, this encounter right here. It happened. It happened in the nineties, and my eyewitness said that he was riding home from leaving his mother house, which he tried to always get out there. And to see her since he, you know, she up in age, so she he always go out to check with her. And he always take the same road there, mother house back home, mother house back home. He never venture off and go a different route. Now, this particular night, this is something he did out of the ordinary. He went a different way. He don't know why. But he said it's like it's just like something something told him, no, go this way. Might take you longer to get home, but go this way. And he he went that way. Now, mind you, as he's driving down this other road that he don't go down to get back to his house, he say 
the left side of the car, which the driver's side, he said it just kept feeling funny on that side of the car, basically the back. So he like, what the, what the, he didn't know what it was. So what he do is he stops, pulls over on the side of the road. He gets out. Now, mind you, it's dark. But it ain't completely dark, but it's getting ready to be black. Because the road that he on is no lights. The only thing you can see is the reflectors in the street. If the lights hit it. Now mind you, he gets out, he checks on that back tire, and he notice the air is coming out fast. Now he got a spare in his trunk so he said he know he's not gonna make it home riding on this tire because soon all the air is gonna be out and if he try to get home on it he's gonna have to wind up pulling over again and then change it. so he decide to change the tire now he gets his jack out start jacking it up as he's jacking it up he started, he said he started taking the, you know, taking the boats out and all that. He started taking it out. So as he taking them out, he said he get, he, he said he get like three of them out. He said when he get three of them out, he hears something. He hears something on the left side of the road up in the tree line. Crunch, mm -hmm. crunch. He hears something like something is walking. He said, but it's like it's taking multiple steps. Like the front, back, back, front, like, you know, like something walking and it's walking on off. He know whatever it is, it ain't walking bipedal like he is. So he thinking it, it might be a, a, you know, a coyote or a fox. He said, because the crunches and the cracks is loud. He say the crunches and the cracks is loud of whatever is walking. So with that, so what he do, he goes in his trunk. He grabs a flashlight, pulls the light out. He shines it over in that direction to see if he can see what's making this noise. When he shine the light over there in that direction, it stops. You don't hear the steps no more. Now he's scanning the wood line with this light to try to catch what was making the noise. But he don't see nothing. But he's still scanning the wood line. So he played it off like it was some type of small animal. He ain't worrying about a coyote or a fox, you know, especially if it ain't eight or nine of them, he wasn't really worried about it. He goes back, start taking the boats out again. He gets out another one. He hear the noise again. He stands up, he looks over there, grabs his flashlight. He said, what the, is making that noise. What's walking over there? Because he don't know. He don't know what's walking in the other side of that tree line. He don't know what's making that noise. So he flashes his lights again. He say when he do it this time, he catches our shine. He said he catches a yellowish eye shine. Right there between the bush. Because he said it's kind of thick over there. So he looking in the bush and he see yellow eye shine looking in his 
direction. But he don't know what it is. And he's looking over there. Then he brushes off. He don't pay no attention. He goes back. To trying to get this tire off. He gets the tire off. Puts it in the trunk. When he puts it in the trunk. The jack in there. Not the, I mean my bad. Not the jack. He put, he, put the, um, he put the tire in there. He takes out the spare tire that he had back there. And he puts it. On. The car. He said when he did that. That's when he hear this low growl, like, he say, but it was, he said, even though it was low, it was loud to him because he feet away from this thing, whatever it is, because he don't know at the time. He hear that growl and he say, what the f is it? He's still looking. He say, that's when this thing starts to walk. Still down on those all fours. But as it's walking in that brush, he stay focused on watching him. He never lose eyesight on him. He's still watching him. And then it stop. And when it stop, it stop near this tree. So it stopped near that tree and it still stirred over there in his direction. He gets the tire on. He start putting the bolts in. Start screwing them in, lock them in tight. So he get down to his last two. He said that's when he can hear what sounded like a tree or like a, a, you know, a tree that you pick up, crack and breaks real loud. So he's like, what the f He say, now he getting mad scared and irritated because he don't know what it is. He don't know what's watching him on the other side of the road. He hear that crack. And he, what the, f he don't know. Now he say he really scared. Now he say he really terrified. He say he watched this thing. He said that's when he can see because he got the light over there shining. He said that's when he can see and he said, this is fucked his head up. That's when he can see to him what looked at like an arm reach up on that tree and then stand up on his hind legs. He said, that's when this thing stood up on his hind legs. He said the light hit his face high. He said this thing was tall and it was massive. He said this thing did something <laughs> that fucked the realm up of anything. He said this thing put up what he said was a hand, a large hand he said that's when this thing put up what he said was a hand to his face when he put the light up there 
He said they fucked this head up. Like he was dealing with something of intelligence. He said when he did that, it just, he just lost it because he don't know what he's dealing with now. He said this thing looked like a giant black wolf standing on its back legs by Peter. He said this thing blocked the light from his face. He said this thing had to be smart or had some type of intelligence. He said, that's when he said, man, I need to get this tire on and I need to get the fuck out of here because I don't know what that thing is. But he never gets the last two boats on. He said, that's when this thing started to walk from behind the brush and out of the wood line. He say he jumps in his car and he locks all the doors. Jack's still under the car. He say this thing walks out of the tree line and stand right at the edge before you go in the street. And it stand there and it looks over there at him. He said he'd never been so fucking scared in his fucking life. Excuse my language, but this is this is the words that he give me while I'm taking this encounter and I'm trying to give it to y'all the same way. Yeah. He said he'd never been scared in his life. This thing stood there. He said that's when it walked out into the street. He said that when it did that, he could hear sounds from these claws on his feet hit the black top, hit the ground. He could hear the noise that these claws made. He said it took a few steps and then it stopped again. He locks all the windows and makes sure all of, he locks all, everything, the doors, make sure all the windows up and everything. Because again, he don't know what he's dealing with. He say this thing stopped. And it still looks over at him. Say the creature was so tall, he had to look up. He said, that's when this creature began to walk again. And it walked towards the back of the car, but it didn't go to the back. It walked to where he had that car jacked up at. Because mind you, he still got the jack in it. He said, this thing grabs the part where you crank. And he slings it. He said, that's when he said, what the fuck? He said he tried to make a phone call. He said, but out of all the times in the world, he couldn't get a signal. And he said he thought that was real fucked up. Like ain't nothing working right for him. Say this thing begin to growl again. And then it walks around the car all the way over on the passenger side.
and it tries to get in. It fucks with the lock of the door, the handle. He said this thing had to be smart. He said this thing had to do what it just did before to somebody else. Because how in the world it would know to try to get in? He said it kept doing that periodically and then it stopped. And then it hit the side of the door. Boom! He said when he did that, it's like he felt the car shake. He said it walked around to the front and it stood there. And it leaned over. And it's, it, it's looking dead in his eyes. And he watching this creature. He said, and this thing growled again. He said that growl scared him, man. It shook him to his core. He said it scared him and it shook him to his core. He said it raised back up and then it walked around to his side. And it did the same thing it did to the passenger side. It tried to get in to the car. But he had the doors locked, which was good. Because this creature did this before. It ain't his first time. He said that's when this thing It knocked on the window like it was taunting him, like it was playing with him, like it was toying with him. That, 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 that. And it stopped. He tried to use his phone again. He said he was so scared to turn that thing around and try to get a picture because he didn't know what this thing would do to him. He said he was so scared. So he didn't even turn it around. He was so afraid. And I asked him, why you just didn't turn your head and just aim it at the, and take it? He said, I was scared. I didn't know what this thing was gonna do. And I said, okay, you are right. said the creature walked back again towards the back. said it walked towards the back and it hit the side of the car again and it shook it. He said it, it rocked it. He said that's how much power came from this thing hand. He said it did that. It turned and it took one leap one leap, he said this thing had to clear about 15 to 20 feet and was in the tree line. Running, crack, crack, boom, boom, knocking shit down. He said just as it came, it left. He said he waited for about two hours before he went out there and tried to look to see where he threw that thing at. He said he finally found it. Hurry up, went over there, got the two boats in, rung it down, put it in the trunk, and he left. He said he never told that encounter to nobody. He said for one, Motherfuckers ain't gonna believe you when you tell them of what you saw. Oh man, I saw a werewolf. Oh, I saw this. They not gonna believe you. That That's what he's saying. He said, then he came across somebody that knew me and he got in contact with me. 
And I was so grateful and so blessed to get his encounter. He said he never, ever took that road again. He always stuck with what he knew best. So that was his encounter. And Damn, that hope was everybody great, enjoyed that. Man, that was fucking great, Thanks, bro. Carlito. Everybody in the chat Thanks, is saying, Carlito, man, that's but that awesome was so encounter. Good. He yeah. said, he said when that thing tried that door, he knew that this thing did that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because he knew how to you know, try to open the door. Yeah, he said he knew that thing did that before. So yeah. I was like, yeah, you're right. So I don't yeah. know if you want to wrap it up now, you know. Yeah, yeah, man, that was great, man. Thank you, Marvin, man, dude, that was great. Everybody in the chat yeah, was like, "Ain't no problem, man. That's what I'm. That, that's what I'm here for, man. I, I love what I do, and I do it because I love it." Yeah, everybody in the chat was loving it, man. I'll tell you right now, they were commenting. They were, they were like, "What?" You know, like they're everything, dude. Like <laughs> they said, charming moment and all kinds of. <laughs> everybody was like, <laughs> you know, that, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, they loved it, man. They loved it. Thank you, Marvin. Everybody says they loved. Your encounter, bro. You. Ain't no problem. You know, yeah. I'm glad Tom, for everybody said, that showed up, man. Always come yeah. out and support. Tom, Tom said, thanks, Marv. Uh, Diana said, great encounter. Just touching the car handle. No problem. Everybody. Anytime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They loved it. Uh, Lee also said, thank you, know, you, Carlito. And I might go live. I might go live. I might go live tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Lee, Lee, say thanks, Carlito, uh, yeah. for having for having Marvin. Great stuff. Tell, 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 tell Lee, tell Lee to call me in like a half hour on Messenger. Okay, he's listening. He's listening. He's listening to call both me of in us, like a half hour, you. Lee, on Messenger. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Anthony, Anthony Metcalf said, "Okay, we can turn the lights up back on now." <laughs> <laughs> Man, crazy. Yeah. Everybody loved it, man. Lee did thank too. You, thank you. Thomas thank loved you. it. Yeah. Yeah. Paul did but, too. Paul Schaefer. He's a good show, man. But thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thanks thank you, bro. Man. Yeah. Showing thank you, Paul. Up. Thank you, big dog. Felipe Mendoza. Thank you, man. Thank you, everybody, for showing up and uh, listening to Marvin, you know, tell his uh, encounters and his personal, you know, life and, 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 you know, how he got started and all that and all the questions and, you know, <laughs> thanks everybody. Um, we will see you, uh, next time. I, I, I think we should do like a part two, Marvin. Honestly, dude, we, we can do yeah, in the because, part two next week. Yeah. 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 Because, uh, I, I don't think we covered like everything, everything, you know what I mean? I feel like, like we, we, we're, we're, we're uh, kind of short on time on trying to cover everything. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, the people got things to do. So, you know, we can't entertain them like three hours like I would like to. You know. What I mean? Well, we start so, early next time. Yeah, 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 definitely. You can start man, like six, your yeah. time. That would be yeah. seven my time. Yeah, yeah. I, I calculated about an hour and a half. So, um, you know, but uh, I was I was wrong. <laughs> I should have I should have calculated at least two hours, you know, and I should have started it earlier, like you said. But, yeah. Yeah, time yeah. flew by, Anthony. Yeah, sure did. Like I said, I'm going to get in here and watch me a couple of movies, man, because I'm kind of <laughs> bored, man. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, man. And watch me a couple of movies. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Tom, no problem, brother. We'll we'll, we'll be here, man. Uh, <clears throat> even if you could show up for a little bit, that's cool, Tom. And uh, if not, you can, you know, just rewatch it or whatever. Um, Tom says he's going to be on vacation next week, uh, Marvin. But he'll try okay. to show up for a bit, yeah. Okay, that'll um, work. Yeah, so we'll definitely do a part two, man. Everybody, I know everybody, you know, loved the show tonight. You know, they loved you, Marvin. That's what it is, man. You know, I just put you. I was just the one to put you in, you know, in 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 the uh, <laughs> you know, in the show. But you know, uh, you 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 know, you're the one that you know made it happen, man. You're the one that made it, you know, magical. Turned out better than I than I thought it was actually. Okay, so, absolutely. Yeah, like I yeah. said, though, thanks for having me on, man, and everything you know. And we'll see y'all tomorrow next week, part two. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, man. Definitely. You know, so you can 
you can wrap it up, Carlito. I told yeah, you. I yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Movies and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, man. Uh, I was gonna ask you because there's some people, you know, uh, asking me a couple of questions. If you uh, wanted to, uh, if you wanted to add anything, you know, a uh, uh, ending, you know, uh, you know, uh, advice or anything like that about the woods, you know, I about mean, cross, dog cross, man. That, cross that concern, man. For the people that say they want to see one of these creatures, then you really don't. You uh -huh. really don't want to see one of these creatures. Trust me, you don't. Right. So rethink that. Rethink yeah. that of seeing yeah. one of these things because you don't, man. Because it's yeah. like it's like something that's coming out of a horror movie. Right. It really right. is. Right. Right. You know, it really is. Yeah, you know? I, I believe. So, I believe. I believe it is. I, um, I've heard. I've heard a lot of a lot of people say that uh, they're actually uglier and more frightening than what we think that's what i heard they are you know, they, actually they, see they, they 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 actually are you know what yeah. i mean they actually are if you see matter one fact, in person yeah matter of fact you were the one that told me that uh one time you said you don't want to see them because they're fucking scary they're fucking frightening dude and they uh because you've seen you've seen the actual pictures that people have taken like Pictures that don't that don't make the media that don't you right know, don't make absolutely it out there. absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I'll take your word for it, man. I, I you know I, I believe they are frightening when you look at them. Um, I believe I believe, and that's why I chose the uh, the the cover that I have. You know, the background cover that I have on on my group. I believe they look similar to that maybe even scarier. <laughs> I know the one that I got. It's not a real one. It's just you know. Uh, animation or whatever, but I believe that they look something like that. You know what I mean? Or maybe even scarier. More frightening. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Yeah. They don't they don't make them I mean they don't I don't think they look as as pretty as they make them look. You know what I mean? Like on, on the artwork and all that. I think they look hideous. I, I I honestly do think they look hideous. Like their mouth, their teeth all, you know, bunched up you know, against each other and Shit like that, man. I just think that they're ugly as hell. <laughs> right. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, but, you know, uh, a lot of people can't really come out and say that because, you know, then you'll get in trouble with, uh, you know, the people in black. <laughs> so, right. yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, I'd love to see that, Tom. As he says, uh, Paul Schaefer has a great pick of a dog man on his group. I'd love to see that. I'm, I'm going to have to check that out, Tom. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that. And uh, thank you, Diana, uh, for 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 your comment. Uh, and I guess uh, we can uh, go ahead and wrap it up then. Uh, I, I also agree with you, uh, Marvin, you know, that we shouldn't go out there and look for those things, especially, you know, trying to kill one of them like that, like, you know, intentionally trying to go out there and kill them. That's a big no-no. That's, that, that's a stupid idea. But I do think that if you do go out in the woods uh, on your own or hunting or, or with your family or whatever it might be, I think you should go armed, man. Because, like I said, 99% of the chance you're not going to see a dog man or a Bigfoot. But there's a good percent chance, like I'm going to say a good 70% chance that you're going to run into a, into a wild animal. And that's where you're going to need your gun. You know, it could be a cougar, it could be a, you know, a bear, it could be a wolf, it could be a coyote, it could be, you know, whatever that, 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 you know, that might want to hunt you down because they are predators, you know what I mean? So, um, I, 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 my personal, um, uh, idea is that you should go armed, you know, that, that's my, that's my personal thought. That you should go armed no matter what. Like uh, somebody mentioned, yeah, you should go armed anyways. And, um, you know, just in case. You never know. You know, I wouldn't go in the woods unarmed. I'd at least take my 9 or my 45, at least. I'd really like to take take a AK-47, but like Big Dog was telling me, he's got an AK-47 that he took out, out to the woods one time. So, yeah, um, but, you know, that that's just everybody's. Uh, taste or everybody's idea on how armed they should go out and uh so thanks everybody i guess this you know pretty much concludes tonight and uh yeah i'm gonna have uh marvin over again for part two 
just to let everybody know uh when i have to schedule that but i will have him for part two and uh because i i, I want to dig in his brains a little bit more <laughs> i don't think we had time. that's why i said that's why i said if we can do it part two next week that would be wonderful to get okay. that part two out okay I, i'm gonna check into that marvin i'm gonna check into that bro okay and i'll let you know uh exactly when we can do it or when we can book it okay um so so thank you thank you everybody for showing up uh marvin you want to you know tell everybody that you know they're you're glad they came by to see you and listen to you and oh yeah absolutely um thanks for everybody that showed up and showed out on um on this live stream tonight um i hope that each and every one of y'all got something out of that whether it was um good or bad you know, but I hope it opens your eyes up to a yeah. lot of people out there to let y'all yeah. know, to let y'all know about these creatures. Diana Marie said, Diana Marie said we had a great show tonight and she loved it. And she learns a little bit uh, from all the uh, cryptic groups every time she uh, joins and, 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 and checks out their lives and all that. So thank you, Diana. I appreciate those words. And thank Absolutely. you, everybody, Absolutely. for showing up. Anthony, Diana, Tom, uh, who else? Dude from Texas was there earlier. Um, Lee, uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, Paul Schaefer. Um, I can't remember everybody else now because I got to go way back. <laughs> Felipe Mendoza. So, everybody, if I miss you, I'm sorry, but uh, thank you, each and every one of you, for being here tonight. Uh, to listen to me, to listen to uh, Marvin. We really appreciate that. Right, Marvin? We're glad you guys came by, man. Thank you, everybody. Everybody, thank everybody. you. We love you. Thank you. Yes. And good night. And good night. All right, guys. We'll see y'all right, next bye. time. Peace out. All right. Bye. Bye. bye.